Yeah, you ain't ready, Mike. You better get right. You know me, bitch. Monday morning. <laughs> Good. This is gonna be red deep. It's gonna be red deep. A few people might get in their feelings, but who cares? Be good. Monday morning, fix it straight. Gotta get ready, kid. Like Jane Brown said, "Big payback." <laughs> okay, we look. We look. We looking good. That's what I'm talking about. I feel like it's gonna rain. Ah, let's see. Let's see what we look like. Y'all get those notifications? I get notifications on all my devices whenever I'm coming on. I like the notifications. How everybody feeling this morning? Y'all feeling all right? Y'all feeling all right? I'm feeling good. Had a wonderful time yesterday with my people. With my people. <laughs> I'm all over. I'm all over uptown yesterday. People just. People 100, man. Ran into so many people, man. Uh, hugged on so many people, shook so many hands, took so many selfies. It's real, people. It's real. Let me tell you something. The respect, the love <clears throat> for a lot of the old Indians who remember. When I once, a lot of them coming up, they, they're young, they don't really know. But for all these old ones, the love and the respect is still there. The streets, man, I ran into so many dudes, man. At the mic, I, I'm, matter of fact, I'm at, I'm at the, I'm at the uh, Super Sunday giving out blue folders. Dude, man, man, Mike, at the mic, I, I need a blue fold, I need a blue fold. At the mic, man. Hey, bro, it's damn real people. See this right here? Break my little heart, man. Break my little heart. In the sixth chapter of Revelation, dealing with the sixth seal, the sixth seal is the end of the Holy Spirit. That's the ending of this Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's the end of the church age, right? We're going to go through this Bible, man. Last week, somebody asked me a question. Okay. Watch, watch how this unfolds, right? We're going to deal with the speaking in tongues. We're going to deal with the ending of the Holy Spirit. We're going to deal how we've been praying bad. And we're gonna do with interpretation now a lot of stuff i'm gonna say in street and street terminology and then i'm gonna turn around and interpret it so for us street people us people who are not street that we won't feel offended and left out right so now i'm going to interpret street things for people who are not street right now do church folks do that for us in the church y'all get the shit baby oh what you talking about well how you think we feel? How you think we feel? We in the church. Y'all get the hollering. We don't understand. So now when Pastor Mike get to running it, and you, you feel that you're not streets, you don't get it, you get offended. Okay. But yet, you got children, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, in church, they get it. But Pastor Mike, that's children. That's the Bible. God say, as you don't it come as little children. But a lot of us, We've been, we've been, man, we so contaminated with bad teaching. A lot of us, we, we messed up, man. If I'm lying, and God knows I'm not. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. How many of you all, the deacon, when he praying, pastor, then said it across pulpits. I didn't even hear the apostle say it. God, give us back with the canker worm. And the palmer worm and the locust then ate up. God, give that back to us. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. Haven't y'all heard that foolishness in church? Haven't y'all heard that foolishness in church? Now, 
for people who are not street. The people, the reason why I felt they might call it foolishness, because on the real, that's what it is. Because that's not what the Bible's saying. That's not as, but that's not what the the Bible never told us to want back. With in the twenty eighth chapter of Deuteronomy, God let Moses knew if the children of Israel be disobedient, this is what the locusts will do to them. So why are you praying back? And all the while you've been sitting in church, praying for judgment to come upon you. You ain't know that. You ain't know that. You know why? Because deacon ain't know no better. He just praying. And pastor ain't know no better. Palsy, palsy. Study to show thou self approval. Okay. There was not no New Testament at the time because Paul is still writing. Okay. No. Timothy had to study the Old Testament. That was to help him with what was coming in the New Testament. So now watch this. When we read the book of Joel, right? Joel give us the game. Joel let us know that the Spirit of God will be poured up upon all flesh, right? Okay, boom. We see that happen in the book of Acts, right? Okay, the beginning of it. The beginning of the outpouring of the Spirit. When did it end? It haven't end yet, but it's going to come to an end. Now, nowhere in the book of Acts where it says you all are going to have the same experience that they had on the day of Pentecost. Nowhere in the Bible it says that. Nowhere. Okay, now, but signs and wonders going to follow. Signs and wonders going to follow who? Signs and wonders going to follow us? Or was the signs and wonders going to follow them? Because they had to be a witness. Now, here come Paul with the teaching, and now Paul is starting the church. But Paul is teaching them about what? Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Stop. Well, Pastor Mike, we be doing that in the church because we be praying. The Bible says we don't even know how to we, we don't even know how to pray as we ought to. But the Spirit will make an intercession with a groan that cannot even be uttered. Before the day of Pentecost, was people speaking in tongues? But they still were saved, right? But they still were saved, right? Before the cross, right? Okay. Before the cross, did the Spirit of God dwell in man or did it come up on man? Or did it come up on man? It came up on man. After he was finished, it went back, right? Okay, now. In the book of Joel, the first chapter, Joel is breaking this thing down. And Joel starts off telling us about the locals, right? We're going to go into the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy deals with obedience and disobedience. Obedience and disobedience. Now, the locals is part of the judgment of disobedient people. So why in church would you sit in there and pray to God? to give you back with the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust then ate. That's the dumb. That's the dumb dumb. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Why? Because they did not study to show themselves approved. Now watch this. Paul says in Galatian, now that I've told you the truth, I'm the enemy. How you gonna get offended by me giving you what's real? Now, how you gonna get mad with me because I don't wanna listen to you Tell me something that's not right. Now, go in the eighth chapter of what? In the eighth chapter of Revelation, now God turns to loose what? The locusts. The locusts are being turned loose, right? Okay. Go in the sixth chapter of Revelation. In the sixth chapter, they running. They are now running from God. Now, watch this. In the third chapter of Joel, God says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong. But he's talking to Heathens, but 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 yet he can go get up there and pray. God, give us black, give us back, God, with the locusts and the cake of worms, God. God, let the weak say I'm strong, God. What the world he just said? Everything just came out of his mouth was wrong, wrong, and y'all repeat that. 
So when y'all pray, go, let the weak say I'm strong. He's talking to heathens. Why? Because in the sixth chapter of Revelation, now he's done brought this thing to the end. What was came to the end? The Holy Spirit. So now they're running. Because now they see that God was not playing with them. But, 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 because Pastor Mike, Praise the Lord. Good morning. This is Pastor Michael Matthews of Dropping the Net Ministries. And this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Saints of God, I would like to have you to know this morning that we serve all this awesome and mighty God. And you need to say, yeah. Say, yeah. I don't get nothing out of that foolishness. Now, nah. street talk. In other words, say, man, give me some understanding. That's all I'm saying. Give me some understanding. But that's just the way we talk, right? So now, everybody is not on that level. But watch this. When y'all was in the church, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and because of the uh, this, that, and the other, and them people didn't understand it, did y'all care about them getting understanding? Did y'all care about them getting understanding? No. Y'all was doing whatever y'all wanted to do in the church because y'all thought y'all was all that. <laughs> Y'all thought y'all just had it all together, but now God showed y'all. It's not that what he said in the 30th chapter of Proverbs. If you say anything that God did not say, he was going to prove you to be a liar. He's proving y'all to be liars. So just take your lick. We took our lick. We, we, we didn't even want to come into church because we didn't understand what y'all was saying. We weren't going to even be bothered with the church because it didn't make sense to us. So when we came to y'all, we couldn't ask y'all no question. So now what? Now what? Because guess what? All day yesterday. Say, Pastor Mike, bro, man, say, man, appreciate you, man. Love you, man. Say, bro, keep doing what you're doing, man. you really helping me, man. you really helping me. Say, bro, dudes weren't going to never come in these churches. Them dudes weren't going to have nothing to do with these churches. But because y'all thought y'all was so right. Y'all thought y'all was so right and y'all want nobody to tell y'all nothing. God's showing you wrong, man. <laughs> y'all ain't know nothing. Boom. Come on, Bible. Let me show you in the Bible. According to the sixth chapter of Revelation, a book your pastor don't know, but you're going to get in your feeling. Well, all I'm saying is street terminology. Say, man, you don't know what you're doing. In other words, street, say, bro, let me help you, bro. That's all I'm saying. Let me help you, but let me show you how to do it. But in the streets, that's how we talk. But you're not from the streets. Okay, interpretation. Interpretation. Okay. If I tell it to you in the street knowledge, I have to interpret to you where you'll be able to understand academically, right? Okay. Do your pastor do that? Can't even ask your pastor no question. You can't even ask him no questions because he don't know nothing. I ain't finished. But y'all getting y'all feelings. Okay. Well, come ask us some questions. Come ask us. You can ask us whatever you want. You, we give you a phone number. We don't just give you a phone number. We come where you at. Wasn't he out there yesterday at Super Sunday? Where Pastor Mike was at? Right there with you. What's that? I, I was on the phone. I mean, the key rolled up. What's up, Pastor? What's up? Oh, oh you on the phone? Okay. Run up on my boy and them. Pastor Mike, you remember us old Tash Street? Yeah, I remember y'all, man. Y'all my people, man. I'll never forget my people. I will never get to where, say, bro. Say, bro. I'm that same dude from way back when. I'm that same dude. But guess what? I know the word of God. I've increased in the wisdom and the knowledge of God. So now you tell me, you tell me, well, the pastor shouldn't be here. Okay. How old are you? You're 40, you're 50, you're 60, right? Right? You like Mays, right? So no matter how many times Mays come, you're going to go see Mays, right? But the same people who are at the second line go and see Mays too. The same people at Super Sunday go and, go and see Mays too. Explain that. You're going to Jazz Fest? Oh, okay. Well, the same people at the Jazz Fest, at the Indians, they're going to be on the stage. The same, the same band that playing in the second line, they're going to be on the stage. And the same people who love the Indians and love the second line band, they're going to be, they're going to be at, the, they're going to be at the, um, the Jazz Fest. What's the difference? What's the difference? Show has been cold playing y'all in these churches. Oh, you can't go here. You can't go there. You can't do this. You can't do that. Show it to me in the book. But you can do whatever you want to do. But Pastor, I seen you at the, I seen you at the Jazz Fest. What's the difference? Where the Indians at? The Indians on the stage. Y'all so phony and fake, it's unbelievable. I ain't finished, watch this. But you gonna tell somebody where they can't go. Man, y'all go wherever y'all won't go. And y'all do whatever y'all won't do. That between you and God. 
That's between you. That's the part they miss. Whatever you do is between you and God. Which takes me back to the 20th chapter of Deuteronomy. If you be obedient, boom. If you be disobedient, boom. Just that simple. Who he was dealing with? Did they, were they filled with the Spirit? No. Were they filled with the Spirit back then? No. So he's dealing with the mentality of the people. In the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, before the Spirit filled them, they jumped, the bones had to join themselves back together. So God dealt with the bones physically before the Spirit came in them. So you want me to be speaking in tongues and mentally I don't understand that foolishness. All I'm saying is, in the street terminology, just help me understand it, please. So now you want to tell me how to talk. I don't want to talk like you. I want to talk the way I talk. I just need understanding. Can you do that? Jesus ain't, well, look, I'm going to just deal with you type of people. And I'm going to just deal with you type of people. Oh, you people this, you people that. No. When you're wrong, you're getting your feelings. But the Bible says a two-edged sword. It cuts, it cuts. And it heals you at the same time. So don't get in your feelings, get in your Bible. So, <laughs> until you prove me wrong, I am not going to shut up. Your pastor don't know enough, and he's been lying to you. Watch this. According to the Bible. But Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, what? I'll wait. Get y'all son to drink, baby. It's going to be a good week. And it has been. So, just because you open a book, and you find everywhere where it's, we're going to deal with this interpretation stuff. We're going to deal with the speaking in tongue stuff. about the mic how you feel about that how i feel about it or how god feel about it because I, I don't feel nothing about it it's not my spirit <laughs> it's his spirit how i feel about y'all with that foolishness now that's where my problem at my problem is with y'all with that foolishness not with god blood of lord when i sit out here and he turn them pages that's god ain't nobody but god when I sit out here and teach this book, that's nobody but God. Why should I write something now? Why should I write something now? For what? If he called me to do it, well, let him teach you. <laughs> Why would I write down what God told me to tell you? That's the craziest thing in the world. I'm going to write down what you told me to tell them. No, he told me to tell it to you. No, I'm telling it to you. Okay. On Sundays, I don't even open the Bible. Some Sundays, I don't even open the Bible. How many pastors could stand in the pulpit and don't even go to the, what I'm opening it for? And what? And guess what? I'm not going to give you no Mary had a little lamb story. I'm not going to tell you what I ate last night. I'm not going to tell you what she did or he did no. I'm going to give you this Bible from Revelation to Genesis. Why? Because as David said, the word of God I hid in my heart. Not what he wrote, not what she wrote, but the word of God. Can you do that? According to the sixth chapter of Revelation, and I will start with the 12th verse. And I will also start with the sixth seal. So you got three sixes. The sixth chapter of Revelation, the sixth seal. Watch this. Twelve verse. Let's go, baby. Where are we going? Go to first? All right. I'm going to go slow. So there won't be no excuse. I'm going to go slow. You know why I go so hard? Look at all the people who have expired and set up under all that foolishness. Look at it. My members tripped out when I told them about communion yesterday. Back in the days, the churches, we was in slavery, people. This way back when, wasn't no air conditioning, no church. So when they had church, they had the windows open. They had the windows open. And because the flies would come in the window and go to the communion table and get on the crackers or the bread, whatever they had, they took a sheet and they covered the communion table with the sheet to keep the flies out. But don't touch that table. Oh my. That's phony to me. Why that table so holy? Why that table so holy and you not? How the table get to be so holy and you not? I wait. And you think I'm gonna bite my tongue? How phony y'all are? Okay. What make that table so holy?
Then Panther gonna stand around the table and y'all done idolize a table with a sheet on it because y'all don't understand the ordinance of the church. The, well, but you're not the ordinance. The origination of the church, where it come from, how it started. That white sheet over that table, it all started to keep the flies off the bread or, or crack or whatever they used back then. Because it was hot, the windows would be open, the flies would come in. So, keep the flies out, cover the table. So, where y'all get that foolishness from in the church y'all doing? And guess what? People been in church forever. They was like, I never heard that. I never knew that. So a lot y'all ain't never heard or never knew. Pastor too lazy to go and research and study for you. But he gonna stand there and tell you something. How you gonna tell me something and you don't know nothing? Paul say, study to show thyself approved as a workman unto God. Not being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. According to the Bible in the sixth chapter of Revelation. <clears throat> and they get mad, I say, I ain't gonna buy the Bible college. For what? Well, I went to Bible college. You don't go to Bible college to learn about God. You learn God from experience, man. You go to school for a man to tell you what to say. So I'm a living witness. You ain't got to go if you don't want to go. I'm a living witness. Why? Bring me one cause I'll teach me. Don't bring me your, don't bring your bishop. Don't bring your pastor. He don't know enough. Go to the Bible college and get the professor. Go to the seminary and get the professor. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. Why, I, why? Because I know the Spirit of God is in you. And I know what the Spirit of God tell me to say. So now go get him. I'll wait. Go get him. Don't bring your pastor. He don't know enough. Oh, okay, God. According to the sixth chapter of Revelation, and I'm going to read it. Break down Monday. Preach it on a Sunday. Break it down Monday. This is the ending of the church age. This is the ending of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Boom. This is why Paul says prophecy and tongues shall cease. Holy Spirit, boom. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Watch this. Verse 15, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man and, and themselves in dens, they will hide themselves in dens and in the rocks of mountains. Why? Because God has now shut it all down. Go back to Joel. In Joel, God said, let the weak say I'm strong. Don't run now. Don't run now with your good smart self. Don't run now with your rich self. Don't run now with your bad self. This is why they even put that foolishness in the song. And y'all be around here singing it. Let the weak say I'm strong. He's talking to heathens. He's talking to heathens. Joel 1, Joel 2, and Joel 3 is giving us the book of Revelation. The canker worm is in stages. First you have the palmer worm. It's birthed out. The locust. Now you have the canker worm, it has wings. It has wings. Now you have the caterpillar, it's gonna devour. Stages, people, stages. But you in church praying that God give you back with the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust then ate up. People, if I'm lying, please tell me I'm lying. Tell me I didn't hear that in no church. Tell me I don't hear you pastors and deacons praying that foolishness. I'll wait. So, a couple of weeks ago, God had me to teach on false teaching. That's false teaching. So if that's false, how much more is false? Because you got me praying for judgment to come upon me. That's not fair. 
pastor, deacon, bishop, you are teaching these people to pray for the judgment of God to come upon them because they won't back with the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar and the locust then ate up. Make it make sense, church folks. Y'all say that foolishness, but y'all never want nobody to check y'all on it. Now y'all being checked on it, explain it. Come here, Joel, according to Joel. Go to Deuteronomy first, let's go to Deuteronomy. <clears throat> go slow, okay. Cause they, they, they gonna get it. Take this to your pastor so he can learn something and stop telling you anything. According to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, for Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter deals with what? It deals with the blessings of obedience, the consequence of disobedience, the consequence of disobedience. According to Deuteronomy, let's start at 36. According to Deuteronomy 28 and 36, 28 and 36 says, the law shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, little g, other gods, wooden and stone. God already know you're going to do it. God already know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. He already know. Watch this, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, and thou shalt become thing of horror, of horror, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee because of disobedience. Verse 38. Thou shall carry much seed out into the field, and shall, and then thou shall gather but little in. Little in. For the locust shall consume it. For the locust shall consume it. These jokers got y'all playing y'all, talking about sow a seed, and all the while is being consumed. By who? The locust. Why? Because of disobedience. If you have a need, sow a seed. Joker cool playing y'all. So now, now, because you don't know no better, you go to Joel and you praying that the locust, the canker worm, and the palmer worm give you back. Why? God said that's part of disobedient judgment. That's why you don't have nothing. That's why you don't have nothing. Joker cool playing you. Joker cool playing you. I ain't finished. Come here, Joel. Let's break this book down. Let's break the book down. According to the sixth chapter of Re go to Revelation. Come here, come here, Revelation. Come here, Revelation. You, come on, go. Let's roll. According to Revelation, and I'll start at let's start at the 12th verse. Revelation 8 and 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. As the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld, and I heard the angel flying through the midst of the heavens, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, 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 and to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of their voice of the trumpets of the three angels, which are yet to sound. The palmer worm. The canker worm, the caterpillar. But bad the mind, the Bible say, line up on line, precept upon precept. According to Isaiah 32nd chapter, whoa. According to 31, whoa. According to 28, whoa. According to 29, whoa. When when Isaiah say, line up on line precept upon precept a little here and a little there he was talking to the priest and the prophet he said y'all too busy around here getting drunk why y'all not teaching these people line up on line precept upon precept a little here and a little there because you're too busy getting drunk you're too busy gurgitating all over the table go back and read the 28th chapter of isaiah before you run your mouth Watch this, I finish. So now, now it's letting us know, whoa, whoa, why? What's getting ready to come? 
in the ninth chapter, in the ninth chapter of Revelation, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun of the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out smoke locusts, locusts upon the earth, and upon them were given power as scorpions of the earth to have power. Back to the 20th chapter of Deuteronomy. For God is using the locusts to judge the people. Back to the first chapter of Joel. The palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust. Why? Because now God said, okay, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. Got it. The young, young sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will have dreams. Young men will have visions. Now, after I tell you that, the sun and the moon. Oh, wait. Yes, Joel. You tells us about the outpouring of the spirit. And as we keep reading, you tell us that is the end of the spirit. So when we get in the third chapter, now it's about repentance. Now it's about judgment. Because when we get in there, now let the weak say I'm strong. Why? Joel 1, Joel 2, Joel 3. But all pastor ever told you about Joel is that he going to pour the spirit upon all flesh. Okay, he's still doing that. Is everybody shining? No, everybody not going to do that. Why? Are we to do what they did? What well, I said in the Bible. But signs, signs and wonders was following them. Why? Because they had to be a witness. They had to be a witness. They had to be a witness. When Paul started the church, now you just got to be a believer. Of what? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I didn't make noise. You don't have to make noise. What you make a noise for? Takes me to Joel. When you go in the Old Testament, the Jews, when they knew they weren't right, they ripped their clothes. They ripped their outer garments, as in grief, as in sorrow. God said, stop all that ripping your clothes. Your heart not right. Get your heart right. And a lot of you church folks, a lot of you pastors and deacons and bishops, your heart not right. That's why you try to tell the people where they can't go and where they can't go. People go wherever they want, them grown people. Don't you go wherever you want to go? Don't you do whatever you want to do? Oh, so it's good for you, but it's not good for me. Say, bro, where y'all get this fake teaching from? Where y'all get it from? I'll wait. I'll sit right here and wait. Please, somebody tell me. If I'm lying, here goes the book. If I'm lying, here goes the book. I ain't finished. Watch this. Come back here, Joel. When y'all see people doing that, pray for them. What, you know, I you know what I love about Osteen. I love you know what I love about Osteen. Osteen, no, he don't teach you the Bible. He already know he don't teach you the Bible. But Osteen, at the end of his message, he will always tell you, get in a good Bible study church. Get in a good Bible study church. He don't say come here because this is a good Bible study church because he know he don't teach the Bible. He just say whatever he say. However you do that. But he tells you to get in a good Bible-based study church. And guess what? Y'all ain't been doing that. Y'all following a man. I wish I would follow a man. According to the Bible, watch this. Joel 1. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethul, hear this, you old men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land, has this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children, tell your children of it and let your children tell their and their children another generation. Verse four, that which the palmer worm, the palmer worm, the chewing locust has left and has the locust, the locust, the swarming eating and that which the locust the swarming has left and the canker worm eating the crawling locust and that which is the canker worm have left and the caterpillar eating the consuming locust so what you been in church praying that god give you back
if you didn't sit in church and you didn't pray that foolishness, if you didn't sit in church and you believe that you could pray that God would give you back with the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust has eaten, when God told Moses in Deuteronomy, that's part of a judgment of a disobedient people. And when you get in the eighth chapter, I mean the ninth chapter of Revelation, now he turned these locusts loose, but it lets you know that there were stages coming. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what Isaiah tells us. That's what Jeremiah tells us. That's what Ezekiel tells us. And then when we get to Daniel, oh my God. So now, now, Joel 1 and 13. Gird yourselves. That's a hurt thing. And y'all believe that foolishness. Y'all sit in church and y'all believe that foolishness, man. These people been telling y'all anything. If that's false, how much more of it was false that you told me? You tells me old things pass away. You a new creature in Christ. The things you used to do, you don't do no more. But you don't break it down to me. So I don't go to the club no more. I don't drink no more. I don't smoke no more. You're still in the flesh. You're still in the flesh. And you'll always do it because you're in the flesh. This is why Paul says, be filled with the spirit. That way you will be led and guided by the spirit because that stuff is still in you. Ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. Just like the medical doctor could tell you, if you had the measles or the chicken pops or whatever it was when you was a child, now because that's still in you, now that you're an adult, you could catch the shingles. It don't go nowhere, people. It don't go nowhere. Like I told him at church yesterday, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in there getting dressed this morning, yesterday morning for church, right? Well, when I was coming up, WYLD from five in the morning to about maybe ten o'clock, they played gospel music. From five in the morning to about 10 o'clock, FM 98, they played gospel music. So any more gospel music on the radio, right? So I got the radio on, right? So I'm getting dressed, hit, hit that thing, hit that music came on. Doom, 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 doom. Y'all know the music I go, doom, doom, doom. And the song came on. There's nothing better that I like to do than sit in here, cuddle all next to you. I'm all in the club. I'm getting dressed. I'm jamming now. I'm jamming. And just like you. So where y'all get that foolishness from? Other things I used to do. Oh, no, I'm jamming. Because you love me. Y'all know that's our jam in the club. Y'all know that was our jam in the club. But now watch this. If Pastor would have went some verses before and really taught you what that was about. For the Bible says. Come here, come here, Bible. Come here, Bible. We'll go slow. I'll be, I'll be back, Joel. Come, come here, come here, Corinthians. But they want to tell you, that's why you were so messed up, people. Bad teaching. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 17 says, Therefore, if, if, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. And, verse 18, and, and all things are of God. You go in the club, what they got to do with God? You smoking, what they got to do with God? And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation okay so that nothing to do with you it was about the ministry the ministry of reconciliation back it up a little bit so I tell y'all let nobody give y'all no one verse let's go back that's 17 and 18 let's go to 14 for the love of Christ constraints us because we thus, we thus, because the love of Christ constrain us, because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we are all dead. Verse 15. 
And then if he died for all, that which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Who are we talking about? The one that died for us. Are we talking about being in the club? Are we talking about smoking and drinking and cussing and lying, all that foolishness? No. Watch this. Verse 15, 2 Corinthians 2 and 15. And then he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Verse 16. Verse 16. 2 Corinthians 5 and 16 says, Henceforth, wherefore henceforth, no, 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 we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth, no, we know him no more. What? So then, man, before you knew Christ, you knew him from the flesh. You ain't know him from the spirit because you didn't know him. That's why that's the dumbest thing in the world. As soon as you come into church, Pastor won't put on his hands on you. You, you join church. Don't know nothing about Christ. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died and God rose him from the dead, you're going to be saved. How? You lying. You don't know nothing about no Christ. How you going to confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart? Something you don't even know nothing about. I wait. The coldest game in the church. And you wonder what happens? Okay. If you've been out here leaving, live, living like a heathen, now you're going to come in the church. you tired of living like a heathen. But pastor gonna tell you, good church folks gonna tell you, well, all you gotta do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. I'ma confess what I don't know. I'm lying. Because I'm confessing in my mouth and believing in my heart that God, you raised him from the dead. How I know you raised him from the dead? I don't know nothing about this stuff. I just joined church today. Oh, have mercy. Come Easter Sunday. You know people come to church on Easter Sunday. Everybody gonna want to give their they life to Christ. You don't see them in church no more. Because y'all been with that phoniness. All you gotta do is come up here and just say you confess. How you gonna confess what you don't know? That's like me saying, Pastor Mike, you love me? Yeah, I love you. I love you. Love you. Why? I'm just confessing. You asked me to confess it, I confessed it. Do I believe it? Do I believe it? I'm going to believe what I don't know. How am I going to believe what I don't know? Come back here, Joel. But you won't tell me about speaking in tongues. How you know if you even say? Oh, shouldn't it be? But yet Paul was being specific. When you come to church, y'all have a song, y'all have scriptures, y'all have hymns, and some of y'all speaking in tongues. He was specific over what you was doing in the church. And he said, if it's not two or three of y'all doing it, and another person to interpret what you all are doing in the church, let him keep silent and do that with God all by himself. Well, Pastor Mike, we be in there praying. How I know? How I know what you're doing in there? Who's interpreting this? So now I get mad. You coming back to church with me next Sunday? No, indeed, I ain't going back in there listening to all that noise. I mean, all that hollering, all that foolishness. So now you get mad with me for speaking real on how I feel. But yet, this is about my relationship with God. This is about where I'm going to spend eternity. Don't, and that's what y'all teach, that I got to stand in front of God for myself. So if I see that as foolishness, street terminology, well, I don't really understand. Well, say that. No, that's foolishness to me. 
Well, if you don't understand it, just say you don't understand. You ain't got to call it foolishness. To me, it's foolishness. I'm interpreting street. That's foolishness. And I'm letting you know, since you don't know no better, help me, I don't understand. Same thing. Okay. Do you understand what they're doing? Yeah. What they doing? They're in the spirit. How you know? What spirit? What spirit they in? What spirit they in? They're in their spirit. Okay, well, what spirit? Because if I take it in Kings, when the, when, when the spirit went in the presence of Goa, the spirit told Goa that I would go down and be a lion spirit in the king's advisor's mouth. And God said, okay, go ahead. So, what spirit? A lion spirit? What spirit? Because according to Isaiah, Isaiah let us know what the seven spirits are. It's in the blue book. So, you telling me them people doing all this, cutting the food, making all this noise, they're in the spirit. Okay, what spirit? I went in the spirit of worship. What I said in the Bible. I wait. I wait. Because according to what Jesus said in the first chapter of Acts, I'll read it to you. Come here, Acts. I'm still waiting for you to tell me what spirit they're in there, making all that noise. The cold plan, y'all, in these churches. And then y'all get offended behind that foolishness. Show it to me in the Bible. That's all I ask. Show it to me. Show it to me. We can work with something. Acts 1 and 4 says, in being a symbol. Go to one. Go to one God. Go to, go to verse one. Okay. So they can have understanding. Okay. According to the book of Acts, I'll start with verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Luke, what are you saying? That very first verse. Mike, all I'm saying is, I'm going to make a document. I'm going to make an account. Everybody else won't write. You ain't say that to Matthew. Matthew wrote his account. Mark wrote his account. John wrote his account. Well, I'm writing my account, Mike. And I'm letting Theophilus know this. I told Theophilus, remember when I wrote my first letter? Go to Luke 1. Okay, I'll go to Luke 1. Let me see. Let me see what you said in Luke 1. Let's tie this in together. We don't want to just be t talking any, you know, we want to make sure that people know how to read the Bible. Okay. Well, let's go to Luke 1 because you wrote, you wrote Luke and you wrote Acts, right? Luke, okay. I'm going to go to Luke 1. Luke 1 says, Luke 1 and 1 says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order, a declaration, a declaration, a narrative of those things which are most surely believed among us. My bad, dude, bro. My bad, bro. So you are writing your narrative of the story of Jesus. And then when you get into the book of Acts, now you're writing an account of what happened after the outpouring of the Spirit. Yay! Yeah. All right, and that makes sense. And both times you was writing to who? Theophilus. Well, who was Theophilus? Mike, he was the governor. He was a dude who was into worship and stuff like that. So I was letting him know, say, bro, what that stuff I wrote to you in that first account, that first narrative, of how what Jesus did, say, man, let me tell you what these dudes doing now. Oh, oh, okay, Luke. Makes sense, makes sense. But y'all just quoting scriptures, making a bunch of noise, that don't make sense to me. Show it to me in the book. I finished. Watch this. Verse 2. Luke 1 and 2. Even as they delivered unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Oh, okay. Now that makes sense. Can I read verse 3, Luke? Okay. It seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding wow you have perfect understanding so you wouldn't have never been praying that god give you back with the palmer worm the canker worm and the locust then ate up 
because you had a perfect understanding from the eyewitnesses about the account of Jesus. Got you, man. And that was done through the Spirit, right? Okay. Because he told y'all in John, the 14th chapter, 15, that the Holy Spirit will bring all things back to your remembrance that you've seen him do and heard him say, right? What spirit that was, Luke? Since y'all are hollering and cutting the food, making all this noise. Still nobody told me yet. What spirit? I ain't finished. Watch this. Verse 3. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, the very first to write, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. So when you wrote Luke, you was writing to Theophilus. When you wrote Acts, you was writing to Theophilus again. Yeah, man. Come here, Acts. I like how you teach, though. Acts 1 and 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and, and teach, until the, day which he, until the day which he was taken up, after that which through the Holy Ghost, after that through which the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Who, 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 who chose him? The ones Jesus chose? Okay. Not man. Because look, this is what we do. We got little bitty children standing on stools, Luke. Talking about God called them. Don't even have a clue. And in the church for, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, look at that child. But yet, Joel told us to teach our children, that they would teach their children, that they would teach their children. Some more foolishness y'all doing in the church. I ain't finished watch this. Look, they got a man gonna sit on the front row. He gonna pass out. Oh, 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 oh. He done passed out, Luke. And you know what the bishop gonna say? Oh, that man been called to preach. That's gonna be a pastor. More foolishness. Cause the dude passed out, Luke. He just passed out. Where we get this foolishness from, people? And the people don't know no better. That's just like, I laid there, right? Entertainers, listen to the word, entertainers put on shows, right? So, in this show, if you ever watch, if you ever seen the homeless girl trialers, they do the same thing everywhere they go. They do the same thing everywhere they go. If you watch musicians, they do the same thing everywhere you go. I was an R. Kelly fan, right? So I went and watched R. Kelly somewhere else, and then I caught him again here. And the same show he did there, he did here. And the people went, wow, wow. No, that man, that lady sitting in the audience is part of the show. It's part of the show. But you don't know that because you just seen that one show. So you all excited. No, that's part of the show. They knew what it take. You paid for a ticket, right? So they have to entertain you, right? So all of that, what goes on in there is part of the show. So when you come to church on Sunday, got to put on the show for you, baby. Got to put on the show for you. That's why it's so easy for the pastor to say, I heard the number nine. I heard the number seven. I heard the number 15. I heard the number six. Now y'all know God said y'all heard that number. Now how many of y'all going to give six dollars? How many of y'all going to give 16? How many of y'all going to give 26? How many of y'all going to give 36, 46, 56, 66? Y'all know y'all heard the number. Did you hear that number, Pastor? I heard it, Bishop. I heard it clear as day. 
and y'all fall for that game. You might well pay your money, go watch the home and grow trials. You might well go to the concert. You might well go see the comedian. Gonna get the same show. Oh, yeah! I'm still waiting for them to tell me what spirit is it. <clears throat> until the day, Luke, um, Acts 1 and 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after that, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many, after the suffering, by many infallible proofs being seen of 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Acts 1 and 4, and being assembled together with them. Who? The apostles. Who? Who? The 500 people that he had chosen. The 500 people that showed up on the Mount of Olivet. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Who he's talking to? The ones he's chosen. His apostles. It's 500 people there. But only 120 going to be in the upper room. Stay focused on Joel. Stay focused on the sixth chapter of Revelation. Stay focused on the eighth chapter of Revelation. I ain't finished. Find that. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said you should, it would say he, you have heard of me. Five, Acts 1 and 5. For John truly baptized with water. For John truly baptized with water. But, 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 you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. What happened, Luke? Mike. Dude ascended, right, Mike? Okay, Luke. What happened? So we went back into Jerusalem. We went back in the upper room. Remember in John, when we was doing the Last Supper in the upper room? So we went back, Mike. That's what we did. We went back up there, right? But all 120 people could fit up there. So when we was in there, Mike, they had a mighty Russian wind came in. Boom. It filled the room, Mike. And it, then it got into the people. And then the people began to speak in his tongue, Mike. It tripped us out. But he told us this would happen. Because he called us to be a witness unto him, Mike. Oh, okay, Luke. Then what happened? The people tripped out, Mike, because it was different people from all over. But everybody began to speak in their own tongue. Wow. So what was that, Luke? Mike, that was the outpouring of the spirit that Joel was talking about. Oh. Oh. So look, are we supposed to do that today? Mike, read the book. Look how many people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they didn't speak in tongues. The Baptist church won't even teach you that, some of them. Won't even teach you that. So how you even know it? So if you're in a Baptist church that don't teach you, the filth, the fullman of the Holy Spirit. How you gonna know what Joel talking about? Because Joel talking about the Spirit. God, you give me the hardest job in the world. Bro. Much is given, much is required. I got that, man. Mess these people up, man. Sad day when Toby went away. It was a sad day. Lord, I'm nervous. I don't know what to tell y'all, me, baby. You heard what I just said? I don't know what to tell you. Let God tell it to you. I ain't about to sit here and lie to you. 
Y'all done been lied to enough. Y'all done been played enough. The sad and hurtful part. Y'all thought that was cool. Because pastor said it. Pastor, I didn't know what he's talking about, bro. According to the Bible. It's gonna get heavy. This week gonna get heavy. Amos five and six says. Starting at verse one. Go to go to twenty five. Go in verse go in verse five. Chapter five, twenty five. Right. Amos five and five. Amos five. Chap Amos chapter five, verse twenty five. Have you offered unto me a sacrifice and offerings in the wilderness for 40 years, O Israel? For 40 years, what y'all gave me? <laughs> I'll wait. But today, because of all that begging, because of prosperity, because of all that lying, y'all give it. Not realizing the locust eating it all up. So now you done gave what you have. Nothing. What pastor have? Ah. Oh, but God will not fire from it. God will not fire from it. I like how you teach God. I love it. Amos 5 and 5. Amos 5 and 25. Have you offered unto me a sacrifice and offerings in the wilderness for 40 years? O house of Israel, but, but, you have borne the tabernacle. You have borne the tabernacle of Molach and <clears throat> you in your images, the star of your God. They made their own God, mate, they're doing it today. <sighs> what you made to yourselves. So, if it's God with the big G, and you say God said it, show it to me. Other than that, you lying. You talking about the little G, or God you made. I'll wait. I ain't finished. Verse 27. Therefore I will cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, who name is the God of hosts. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountains of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. I read straight out of chapter five into chapter six because it all goes together because he's talking to Israel because Israel them built their own goal. Verse two. Amos 6 and 2. Pass ye unto Cana and see, and from thence go ye, Hamath the great. Then go down to Gat of the Philistines. Be there better than these kingdoms? Are their border greater than your border? Yet yeah. that you that put far away the evil day and cause the seat of violence to come near that lie upon the bays of ivory and stretch forth themselves upon their couch and eat the lambs out of the flock and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the staff. Who doing that? What's they doing y'all? Then they go to, then they go to, then they go to Joel and tell you. Joel three and nine, proclaim ye this, among the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Verse 10. Joel 3 and 10 says, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Make y'all stuff a battle. Make it, get it ready. God said, get it ready. 
Let the weak, let the weak say I'm strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathens, and gather yourselves together round about. Thy cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathens be weakened. They don't put that foolishness in a song. Let the weak say I'm strong. He talking to heathens, people. talking to heathens in the sixth chapter of Revelation they running don't run now Revelation 6 and 15 and the kings, kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid, hid themselves in dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sit on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? This is why in the third chapter of Joel, he's saying, let the weak say I'm strong. Get y'all get y'all spears together. Get y'all stuff together, because I'm about to deal with y'all. Why? Because after that sixth seal come off the book, boom, that's a wrap. No more spirit. No more spirit. Why? Because now it comes to judgment. This is why in the eighth chapter, he say, whoa, 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 why? Because you got the palmer worm, the canker worm, the locust. The palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar. This is in stages, people. And this is how it's going to play out. And this is how it's going to happen. But you're not going to believe it. Because you believe that you can pray <laughs> and ask God to give you back <laughs> what the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust then ate up. Boy, y'all go get smashed. Because pastor said, Lord Ambrose. Wow. No, not whoa. Wow. That the we say I'm strong. Oh, I'm, I'm a new creature in Christ. How you know? How you know? Because you don't smoke no more? Cause you don't drink no more. You ain't no new creature in Christ. You're still in the flesh. Stop lying on that man. You're a new creature in Christ because what Christ did on that cross. Because God used Christ to reconcile you back to him. That's the only reason why you're a new creature. In Christ. Not because you don't drink or smoke no more. That ain't got nothing to do with that man. That's on you. That's works of the flesh. He came in nothing but spirit. So what we gonna deal with? We gonna say how to. That won't, According to the Bible. Come here, come here, Paul. Come here, Paul. Come here, Paul. Come here, Paul. That's why I don't do that iPad fooling. I gotta turn scriptures. You need no iPad. I'm gonna tell you what the books are. According to the Bible, right? We're gonna start at let's, let's start. What do you want to start, Paul? Verse 10? Ephesians 5 and 10? All right. According to Ephesians 5 and 10. Put my glasses on. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. <laughs> I like that, God. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Back to the fruits of the Spirit, huh? Uh, we're gonna work this week for it is a shame for it is a shame ephesians 5 and 12 for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret but all things that are reproved all things that are exposed 
are made manifested by the light. For whatsoever do make manifest is light. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise. So when I say, say, well, I don't want all that foolishness, because to me, they sound like fools. Because what? See that you walk circumspectively, carefully, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Ephesians 5 and 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunken with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. <clears throat> Done. What was spirit that was? What would that what they do? What spirit is that? In the sixth chapter of Revelation, now we see that the spirit has come to an end. That's it. No, 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 more, no more seven dispensation, the dispensation of grace. Church age gone. Done deal. Now here come the judgments of God, right? But the judgment is for ungodly. Because Jesus came for the ungodly. He came to save the ungodly. So now all of us who are saved, come on, y'all get out the way. I got y'all. Let me deal with the rest of these people. So now, now we got the two witnesses. Church gone. Y'all better accept these two preachers. Other than that, what y'all gonna have? So now they're gonna kill the two preachers. They're gonna leave them in the streets for three days. They're all gonna take them up. Never lose focus of the seventh chapter. For the angel tell the other angels, hold up. They're not ready yet. Don't don't uh, hold back that wind. Hold back that wind. Hold back that wind until we get them sealed in their foreheads. So now the 144,000 have to be sealed. Okay. Grandpa, grandma, they sit on that seal and they're on that church and they believe that they are one of the 144,000. That's a lie. <clears throat> According to the Bible, in the 14th chapter of Revelation, it tells us who the 144,000 are. We go in the 48th chapter of Ezekiel, and guess what? Ezekiel gives us names. God is going to add the 12,000, and then he's going to add another 12,000. 12,000 times 12,000 is 144,000. It's going to come from the children of Jacob, Israel. That's where we're going to get our 144,000. After, after the two preachers get killed because the church gone, God's still giving them a chance with two preachers. Once they killed the two preachers, now we see the first glimpse of the Antichrist. Because now it's money being given out to kill the two preachers. So whoever killed them, the Antichrist is giving them a gift because now the stage is set for him to be in place. So now here come the 144,000 and the 144,000 are going to help the people that wants to be saved. Why? No more Holy Spirit, no more church. Go all the way back to Joel. Joel let us know the beginning of the pouring of the Spirit. Then Joel let us know the ending of it. 
but the church never taught us the ending of it. It always taught us the beginning of it. There were only 120 people in the upper room, so the Holy Spirit wasn't poured out on all flesh because all flesh wasn't just no 120 people. Come on, man. I have a bed. I Say, God, man. Nothing I can do, God. You gave it to me, baby. I just got to work it. Now what? Now y'all see why they told y'all not to read Revelation. Now y'all see why great great grandpa couldn't read. He didn't have a full understanding. That's why he didn't read it. He couldn't explain it to his child. Oh, don't worry about reading that, son. Let me tell you something. If you read that, boy, gonna drive you crazy. I tried to read it. it, drove me crazy. So I ain't read it. Don't read that. And it got passed down to generation, to generation, to generation, to generation, to generation. What's so scary about it? What's so hard about it? All man had to do is get out the way. That's all you had to do. The hardest book in the book, Revelation. God said, Mike, teach it backwards. Start with the 22nd chapter of Revelation and walk it all the way to Genesis. I said, God, you're going to drive me crazy. <laughs> He said, you're already retarded, little boy. Don't worry about it. You're going to be all right. <laughs> Scare it. Mike, I ain't giving you no spirit of fear. What you scared of? So all the wisdom, all the completion of prophecy, all the completion of the tongues is in Revelation. Wow. After the first chapter, I see the spirit is present because the spirit finished doing his work. So now he's dealing with the church. Now he got the book. Now he come, boom, y'all come on, let's go. Y'all wrapped it up. Now it's nothing but judgment. That's what Joel said, chapter one, two, three. But all you know about in Joel is that he gonna pour out his spirit on all flesh. And then you beg God to give you back with the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust that ate up. People from now on, listen. Listen. Because everybody, everybody ain't getting it yet. But listen. What comes out of people's mouth when you come down to this book? Listen. And you know what you're going to say to yourself? Oh my God. God was right. Not the little intelligent retarded man. No, that's me. No. God was right. These people really don't know. Because, let me tell you something. I learned how to preach in jail. <clears throat> and I say, God, I don't know how to do this. God, don't worry about it. I got you. But then I seen how he was doing it. I seen how he was doing it. God said, don't get caught up in that. You do what I tell you to do. Because what they're doing is performance. And he competing with him. That's why they don't get along. The Baptist, full gospel, full you. No. That's why they think they're better than them. And they think they're better than them. So now, when you put forth a man to teach or preach, he trying to prove to that man that he can do it better. That's why he write it down. And then he go to Bible college, seminary, to learn hermeneutics. They learn that. They practice that. Practice telling the truth. How about that? Practice telling us what the word of God says. Not what you're making it say. Practice that. Can they teach you that in Bible college? Can they teach y'all to be real with us? In seminary, can they teach y'all to give us the real? And the sad part, y'all pay for that. Y'all pay for that, bro. And don't know nothing. How you, how you go to school to pay somebody to teach you to tell the people wrong? I wait. I'm telling y'all, when our minister, come, come communion Sunday, we're going to line up. 
They're going to get a big bucket, little pan, little ceramic pan. They're going to pour the water on your hands. You got to wash your hands. Then another deacon going to come give you a towel, making you feel important, right? They mean, that's all they're doing, making you feel important. So you washing your hands, and then one, one minister is going to stand on this side of the table. Another minister is going to stand on this side of the table. And at the same time, we're going to raise the sheet up, and then pastor going to look at the, 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 um, the stuff, and then pastor going to say something. For what, bro? All that for what? We made the sheet important. We made the table important. Better yet, the flies made it because back in those days, it was too hot in the church. The window had to stay up. So the flies came in and got in the communion. So to keep the flies from getting in the communion, bring a white sheet. Can you bring a white sheet to church next Sunday and we cover up the communion table so the flies won't get in it? Okay. And now here come you Negroes. Won't be important. And then you got, oh, don't touch the table. Stay away from the table. The table, the table, the table. What's wrong with this person? What's wrong with you? It's just a table. Your heart not right. Get your heart right. Get your heart right. You're worrying about the table. You need to get your heart right. God ain't worrying about that table. God already know. Bible, big. Bible. If I'm lying, come show me. The origin of the church. Like a lot of you Baptist folk. Or put your finger up to walk out the church. For what? What you put your finger up for? Slave mentality. Because the, the, the man, who the man put over y'all, he sat there. Sat there right in church. And kept account of all you Negroes that was in church. And so when one got ready to leave, they put that finger up. Got one leaving, boss. Got one leaving. We're leaving out. Okay, we got one leaving. What's the count? Okay, one left. And still today, y'all get up in the Baptist church and walk out the churches with y'all finger up. Lord have mercy. Y'all, man, see, bro. Y'all keep that from me. So you mean tell me, Grandma, you weren't going to teach us no better? Grandpa, you weren't going to teach us no better? Joe L. said, teach generation to generation to generation what they was going to teach us if they didn't know no better. How to have a slave mentality. How to have a slave mentality because that's where it comes from. Bad to my leaving. <laughs> when y'all, from now on, from now on, when I get ready to go up, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and then I'm gonna press the button. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have to bite leaving. <laughs> Interpretation. Interpretation. When y'all when be sitting in church, why? Why would y'all sit in church? Then them ain't too many young people gonna do it. But well, watch them old people in church do that. They get ready to leave. And if, and, if, and if this person here was raised up in the church under somebody old, they're gonna do it. About my age, they still do it. <laughs> I mean, that, they be all at they be all at the funeral home at a wake doing it. What put your finger down? What you got your finger up for? What they gonna do? Like, what that foolishness for? Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. We learning. We learning better. Don't y'all say to know better to do better? Okay, but we learning better. Watch the people. <laughs> y'all know y'all done did it. That's why y'all be laughing. <laughs> God, they got their finger up. <laughs> Oh, I'm holy. I'm leaving. I'm holy. <laughs> Respect, Pastor. No, brother. All right, bit. <laughs> All right, let you leave. What you put your finger up for? What your finger broke or something? We gonna have to have. I don't. I don't know. We're going to have to find a, a, a place, right, that'll see a good bit of people. And you come with your blue folder. But some people have the mic. 
when you gonna start teaching on the Daniel, the breakdown of Daniel? Because people really want to know that. How the mic? When we gonna do the churches? Because people want to know that. Some people want to know the seals. Some people want the breakdown of the chronological order of the Bible. Everybody said, Pastor Mike, that's a lot of material. This stuff, we should have been known. If Pastor, talking about he had a study of divinity, a study of Christian counseling, he should know this. So you got all them letters behind your name and all them certificates on your wall you don't know this stuff right here? Man, miss me. Whole game. Because this is the cold part. <clears throat> you think everybody go to college, learn? People know people. Pass the envelope. Next thing you know, they graduate. How you get to graduate and you ain't never? I had to go to that class. I had to go to that class. My people took care of that for me. So you think everybody go to Bible college? Go to Bible college? Say, but I'm gonna send my boy over there by you here. Make sure you get through. The love of money is the root of all evil. It's my boy. I looked out for my boy. So now my boy got his certificate. So now my boy and I, we can run game together. Why? That's my boy. And we gonna run game on y'all. And when you, that's, don't ask us no question now. Don't answer that, no, no. Well, he don't have to answer that. What you mean you don't have to answer that? I need to know that. You say it's in the Bible. He can't answer. You know why? Because the same thing he did for his boy, somebody did for him. And you want me to listen to him? For what? Pastor dumb as a box of rocks when it come down to that Bible. He make it sound good and feel good to you. <laughs> Will anybody know that book? Give, give me, like I say, give me five women and five men that came out that joint. Five women and five men who done came out the joint. Shut everything down. Shut everything down. They wouldn't stand a chance. So that's why when you come out of jail, they're not gonna let you in their church. And if you write a sermon, they need to read it first. Why you got to read what God told me to write and tell the people? Why you got to read it? So much game in the church. I'm going to get, well, I got to make sure you're saying it right. But if God told me to say it, it's going to be right. If God told me to say it. Never wrote a sermon now. From day one, the bishop on here, Duckworth on here, they was, they was in Kentucky with me. Never wrote a sermon now. The brothers who went, well, they, they put me out the pulpit and, 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 and uh, up there in Yazoo, Mississippi. I got put out the pulpit. I ain't like that chapel. He was, he was, I don't know what that chapel was on. Them, they got brothers on here who was in, in Pensacola with me. They know. Wrote, write a sermon now for what? Write that foolishness down for me? Never. And I ain't even know it. So miss me with all that what? No. Day one, I told God, man, I ain't writing that down for what, God? If you call me to do it, okay, well, I'm going to stand there with my mouth. Let's roll. He said, okay, you're going to sit here the 11 years, and I'm going to teach you for 11 years. So that's where I go. Give me five men and five women that come out that joint. Shut the average Bible, the above average Bible college will shut it down. Seminary will shut it down. That's why they don't want the people out the prison in the pulpit. They say that jailhouse religion. No, Negro, that's the truth. <laughs> We ain't in that denomination stuff. We coming with the truth. And y'all can't handle it. Because y'all contaminated with a bunch of jibby, jibby, jab. 
holler at my boy Chris Dale yesterday. He said, man, you ever read this? Chris Dale, I know it by all. Chris Dale said, man, bum, 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 bum. Oh, we're going to be all right, baby. Don't be hard on yourself. It's about a personal relationship with God. That's it, people. That's it. Get to know God and get to know God for yourself. That's it. If you ever learn to do that, you will be so free. Oh, my God. You will be so free. You got some people follow that dude. I ain't gonna call his name, but he way back then, you know. He's to tell the people, if you give a dollar, you're gonna get back two dollars. If you give a dollar, you whoever followed him back in the day, they know who I'm talking about. Say, bro, get to know God and get to know God for yourself. Build you a personal relationship with God. I ran at the, at, at, at the Super Sunday yesterday, right? I ran into a young brother that I used to do um, do the because uh, I had the young kids when I was at the church downtown when I was a minister Sunday school right and he was one of my Sunday school students right Joker walk up on me Joker tall I said why you got tall so we running it right and and I say you been going to church but no I don't, I don't really do church you know I'm just getting to know God and this and that. So I said, well, you know, I got my church. Oh, man, what up? He said, tell you what, give me your information. Let's hook up. Man, I'm going to take you to eat. It's on me, right? Why? Because when I was with them young brothers, I gave them the real. I'm talking about I had the 12, 13, 14, 15. They would all be in the room, right? And we're running it, right? I said, I'll tell you all what we do. Because these people that gave us this Sunday school stuff to read, we're going to read this first. Everybody take a verse. We read this. All right, put that to the side. That's right. What's really happening with you, little brother? What's really happening with you? And them little brothers put me on so much game. I said, okay, what goes on in here stays in here, right? Okay. I tell one grandmother, y'all need to watch him. Y'all need to watch him. Them little brothers told me, this had to been back in, Oh, nine, ten, about nine, ten, back up in there. Them little brothers told me, Minister Matthew, if you don't been and got none by 11, you late. I say, 11? Y'all having sex at 11? Yeah. I say, you one of the ones made it. So now, here come this dude, brother, that left Texas and came back to New Orleans. And now he want his brother to be over the class. Church politics, right? So, okay. When he showed up to teach the class, the young men didn't like that. They wanted, they wanted Mr. Matthew. So I fall back. You want to teach me? I fall back. Well, you know it, I left the church. I called back some years later. He in jail. He done got killed. They don't go to church no more. He into some other stuff. Because you phony, fake church politics people. Really, bro? Y'all don't know the damage y'all be doing because nobody don't tell y'all about yourself. And y'all think y'all holy than thou and don't know nothing. Don't know nothing. Mess them children up behind church politics. And still today, y'all do it with all these cliques in the church. Then y'all put pastor way up here. That Negro ain't nobody because he don't know nothing. He don't know nothing. How to make it sound good so you can feel good to take your money. And y'all been falling for that foolishness. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And you want me? You want me? I wish I would. I'd rather die than follow that foolishness in the church. Because it's phony. And they've been phony. Nobody never told them about themselves. Because y'all thought them Negroes was right. Them Negroes did wrong. Then they come with all this old bishop stuff. Them Negroes be paying for that. It paying for that. What I look like paying you to make me something that God have already made me. What I look like 
What I look like? I wish I would. And you know, when you, when you give your money, we come in and you parade. Get, get every last bishop. I get. I guarantee you, God will walk every last one of them. We'll get every last one of them. Negroes cold fake. Them Negroes playing church. No, no, my no Holy Spirit. Every last one of them. I said it once. I said it twice. I said it again. I stand on. Yeah, I said it. Bring me one. Bring me one. I'm. You praying for the canker worms and the palmer worm. You let the weak say I'm strong. Oh, I'm a new creature. And hey, come on, bro. When you read that Bible, come next Sunday, all you gonna hear in church is he rose. How many times you done heard that foolishness? So for us who don't go to church, we heard that last Easter. So every Easter we gonna hear the same thing. What you learning? Because watch this. They paid, they paid them gods to say that his disciples took him they paid them not to tell the truth. Same thing in the church today. Making money not to tell the truth. That's why I'm begging, you, babe. I'm free. I ain't gotta I ain't gotta say nothing to make it sound good so you could give me. I say whatever God tell me to say. Why? Let him take care of me. He got me out here doing it. He gonna make sure I'm all right. I'm free. You don't know what it's like to be free. Do what you want. Come on, man. It's just you and God. Hey, I, I, well, you know, in the Baptist church, we don't talk like that. Well, you know, in the Pentecostal church, you know, we do it like this. You know, in full gospel, we wear this. Every last one of y'all found me. Pastor Mike said it. Go tell them that. If I'm lying, I got 66 books. Show me. If I'm lying, Another man playing another man to play y'all. Another man gonna play another man to play y'all. Really, bro? Okay. I, 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 I got, I, I, come on, y'all got it. Let's go. What's that? Bring one. Bring one. Better yet, bring all of them. Bring all of them. Bring all of them. I'll wait. No, 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 no. We got this. I'll wait. I know they don't know nothing because they can't answer no questions. We're going to go from Revelation all the way to Genesis. We're going to go from Revelation all the way to Genesis. We're going to start in that 22nd chapter. Because in that 22nd chapter, he said he's coming. In the 22nd chapter, he said he's up in Omega. In that 22nd chapter, he never he didn't let us know about all of those who are not going to make it in. In that 22nd chapter, he put us on all game. Because in that 21st chapter, oh my God, God is talking. No more tears, no more crying. Look at this new Jerusalem. Look at this holy city. Okay. 20th chapter, millennium. The 20th chapter is millennium. The 20th chapter is the lake of fire. The 20th chapter is the books. Okay. 19th chapter. Oh, the bride. The bride. The robe. The white horse. The white horse. The beast. The, the, the what? The beast. What? What? The false prophet. 18th chapter. One hour. Oh, going to destroy Babylon in one hour. 17th chapter, the three, the seven, the ten. Stay focused on Russia, stay focused on China, stay focused on United States. The three being led by the one, and the other seven gonna follow, and all ten of them gonna give their kingdom to the beast, which puts us in the seventh 17th chapter. 17th chapter deals with what? False religion, false Babylon. Babylon religion, Babylon politics, Babylon economy is going to be destroyed. Revelation 22, all the way to 17. The 16th chapter, now we're going to deal with the seven bold judgments. So once these seven bold judgments get poured out, now we come with the battle of Armageddon. After the battle of Armageddon, now we go in the millennium. Boom. 15th chapter, God said that's expired, right? What's expired, God? Mike, I'm going to fill the temple with smoke. No prayers coming in, no answers going out. No prayers coming in, no answers going out. Why? Because in the 14th chapter, Mike, I put the 144,000 in place. Why? Because in the 13th chapter, Mike, the first beast, according to the first verse, 
is going to give power to the second beast according to the 11th verse. And the second beast is going to lead the people, which is going to be a false prophet, which is going to come out of the church. The church. The church. That's why in the 12th chapter, the greatest spiritual war that ever took place. That took place. So now we see how this thing is being played out from 22 all the way to 12. Why? Because in the 11th chapter, Mike, I told him build a temple. The inside for the Jews, the outside for the Gentiles. Why? Because it's time for the Gentiles to reign. So what's up with the two witnesses? Mike, go back in the book of Zechariah and you're going to get the two witnesses. But what about the 10th chapter? Mike, the 10th chapter is the end of the first three and a half years of the tribulation period. For the tribulation is seven years. Walk the Bible backwards. Down they throw because I know they don't know it. So, God say, Mike, all this year, every message you preach on Sunday, you come out of the book of Revelation. So now, every Sunday, in preaching from Revelation, I got to go to the other 65 books. Why? Because it was prophesied in one of those 65 books. The completion is in Revelation. But if you don't know Revelation, okay, well, tell me about the seven churches. Tell me about the seven seals. Tell me about the seven trumpet judgment. Tell me about the seven bowl judgment. Tell me about the lake of fire. Tell me about the books. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. And you can. Don't stutter. Don't stutter. Who is really the bride? Are we the bride? Are we really the bride? But yet the Bible tells us who the bride is. For the angel told John, come let me show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he shows him a holy city, the new Jerusalem. According to the 22nd chapter, y'all won't need no candles. Y'all won't need no sun. Y'all won't need no moon. Why? Because the glory of God is going to be there. That's the only light you're going to need. That's just like in the beginning, God, when you said let there be light. Before you hung a moon, you hung the stars, you hung the sun, they were already light because of the glory of God. And see, bro. God, thank you. I ain't going to nobody to Bible college. I'd be dumb as a box of rocks. I don't know nothing. Be telling the people backwards stuff. Love y'all, baby. Tell finger. <laughs> Time to depart. <laughs> Leave. Put your finger up for dumb stuff. <laughs> Lord have mercy.